it is our first best of two of the gold league. Who gets the jump start into this tournament and who has to fight for survival right after the first match that we got on the broadcast? Lao Pao Esports Club Derby, it is still China versus Korea, of course, the never ending battle between them. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. All right, we're going to be starting off on Amazonia. One of our smallest maps in the pool. The first question here we have to ask, of course, is, is this going to be Farsi Headhunters or are there going to be some grunts involved early, which is uh, very rare to see nowadays. <laughs> It's going to be almost always Farsi Headhunters, and that is the case here for Focus as well. We have the War Mill and the Barracks, and soon-to-be Headhunters coming out, and I imagine the Farsi as well, indeed. We caught a glimpse of Fortitude's base there for a moment. He went for a bit of a power build on the altar. Wait, it's actually a huge power build, so lots of resources hmm. invested to get this AM out very early on for Fortitude, trying to get level 2 Archmage before the Farseer even shows up. Exactly, that's the purpose of this build, right? Costs a couple of resources, but uh, once you secure level 2, you can't really face an orc without Brilliant Sora, I guess. So, yeah, maybe that will result in a little bit of a slower tech timing, but if you got the levels, then it might work off. Lightning Shield on the Archmage, getting two of the creeps uh, done immediately. What about the year of the two players so far? Uh, Focus, of course, won next winter since then. Not the greatest results. A couple of semifinals in Smile Cup and uh, Dreamhack third place in Ted Cup four. He, so he is always a contestant for the playoffs, but where is the big win? Not even in the tier two tournaments we've seen that, which is rare because the tier two tournaments usually belong to him. For Fortitude, as we said, really not his year. Uh, kinda 50-50 when it comes to playoff participations. I wouldn't be too surprised if he gets eliminated in the group stage, but hey, WGL, a very, very a good tournament for him. Usually, only once did he not make it into the playoffs, and that was spring in 2016, so five years ago. Yeah, and Fortitude definitely did his homework here, going for a specific build. Orcs have uh, liked Amazonia against human for quite a while now. That was the case with Farseer Grunts and also the case here with Farseer Headhunters in this early game seems to be going in favor of Fortitude, but that power build costs some more lumber. It slowed down the footies, so the tech advantage is gonna be with the orc, but not by much really, right? Just yeah. a couple of seconds, tier 2 for 40 also starting, and now Fortitude, he would love to get a fast level 3, get those <laughs> watch elementals, and push the orc base. That's something we've seen by him over many, many years, but of course, when the Farseer is chasing you, pressuring the footman, it's very hard to do. Yeah, you basically have to run away at this point of the game. I was a little curious that we have no Scout Tower or Arcane Tower in the base of Fortitude. I think he delayed that for a fast attack. And once he hit the tech and had the resource together, he's upgrading this one. So cutting a little corner, but gluing it back right after. Yeah, wants to get tier 2 here quickly. Something that we've seen by Chimiko, for example, who seems to be faring the best at the moment against Orc is go into a three farm tech with four or five footies into defend. Don't take any kind of trades before that. And once defend is finished, then you can start training with ad hunters. And the fast tech on tier two, go for the beast master and then harass the tier two buildings. Kind of old school, which certainly is a style that favors fortitude. He's been playing that for years, but I haven't seen it by him in this matchup yet. I wonder if he's going to follow up there uh, in Chimiko's footsteps. But as mentioned earlier, also Panda is a possibility. Mountain King, Seems like a bit of a liability nowadays with how slowly he comes out. The tavern definitely there is very tempting to go for for the human. Was about to say the same. Like this is a very tempo-based matchup and the Mountain King don't really fit that style. He's of course amazing if you can get him up to level three and beyond. This is why some orcs were starting to play a lot more Wyvern uh, because the Mountain King was so scary, but especially here, uh, I don't really see that coming. What we did see in the back of the base here for Fortitude was a blacksmith. So we're going to have rifles now underway, which is uh, not the norm anymore. I keep re referencing Chimiko because he seems to be the standout human player at the moment. He's been moving away from, wi uh, from rifles for quite a while now, and so has Sock. But Fortitude is going to try it here once again with rifles coming in. I think that should mean a Mountain King then as well. You want to have yeah. that clap to control the enemy side, and you want to level up that Mountain King then on Tier 2. 
which is not that easy to do in Amazonia. It's always easy to get creepjacked on this map. On the other side, we see the TC has the same problem as the Mountain King. Takes a little while and then he's really, really powerful. But yeah, his folk is getting tricked by this. It's kind of a hidden blacksmith. It's also nighttime, so the vision radius not the greatest for focus at the moment. Of course, he should know his ally inside out, and I think he will do the, the, the right adjustments. We see Shaman coming, as well as a relatively early beastry, but man, this is a picture that we've seen a million times in the history of Warcraft 3. Fortitude raiding an orc phase successfully. He's gonna get the cancel here. Shouldn't even cost him a footy, perhaps. Has defense. Trying to go for the lodge, but that's not quite gonna be enough damage, and the Farseer... Doesn't have level 2 yet, doesn't have the chain lightning, and the headhunters aren't even in position here to punish this. Maybe with a stomp, with a speed scroll, with a surround, you could force a TP here at least. But that's not gonna happen. At most, one single footy is gonna go down. So good harass by Fortitude and focus perhaps a bit out of position. And that beastry being delayed does matter because normally you wanna go into raiders quickly, have that ensnare to pick off those riflemen reliably. Maybe some priests as well. But without that beastry, without that ensnare, it's gonna be a little bit harder now for Focus to look for those kills. But Focus is still level one on both heroes. There's no chain lightning to do some decent damage to grab or to accelerate the killing on footmen and the TC still needs some time and 40 he should be getting closest to three on the Archmage and then he's very very powerful not getting jagged focus at the same time goes for the natural big item of course have to take a look at the rock go ro rock golem here big consumable one of the two left on the map but fortitude he's sacrificing his Archmage progress for scouting information a little bit of harass and of course the power creeping of the Mountain King himself Gonna go over to the natural with some militia call that should be doable. And you know, normally when you play fast your headhunters, you're expected to do very well in the early. Slow down the opponent, maybe kill some units, also creep quickly, and then go into the mid game with a bit of a lead. Maybe uh, a unit lead or an experience lead, some kind of lead, and have superior tempo to play with that lead in the mid game. But this just didn't happen at all. Fortitude is in a very even game, he's just creeping up the map. Classic. Amazonia mid-game happenings here, just creeping clockwise on both sides. Well, I guess it's counterclockwise rather. And hoping for some good items. TC got the big healing, which is very good. MK with big invuln, also very good. And now we're gonna get a big permanent item. All right, yeah, indeed a slow game. Didn't really expect this, especially from, from Fortitude, who's known for this uh, very dedicated, deadly pushes, but without a level three Archmage, not even Fortitude wants to do that. And now it's Focus moving across, being the first to be aggressive with that level three TC. That's his sign to cause some damage. He gets three as well. We have Rebel the Magi on the TC for more mana. That is good. Mountain King with the Scourge Bone Chimes. Very unfortunate. For the next two minutes or so, for footies and militia, it's still going to be helpful. But later on, of course, uh, will be useless, will have to be a sell. Focus looking for the fight. Fortitude, if he calls militia here, he can set up a sandwich. But he may also want to TP out. Does he like the look of things here? He has to fight with these militia. They're coming in from the main now. Seems a little late to me. Focus fire on the rifles is good. First one going down. TC, epicenter, goes into the back line of things. And Fortitude seems like he's losing unit after unit after unit. Heal scroll also by Focus at the perfect timing. When do you ever see priests being sniped like that? Perfect position for the orc. Clap has to do some major damage. There's still one heal scroll for Fortitude though. Lightning shield has to use it right there. And if this fight continues a little longer, then Focus could use a lot of units. DC like. dropping low as well. What's going down first? So many heroes close to death. So is the AM, by the way. So is the AM. Have to TP out Stomp to control the Mountain King. And with that, the TC will survive this. Great creep, Jack. Great fight there taken by Focus, absolutely favoring him. He's up in supply by a lot. That Lightning Shield did so much damage after all the priests were dead. And I think the MK positioning there wasn't perfect. It took forever for the MK to get the first clap out. He basically allowed the Orc army to get past him without getting clapped first, and he went into the back, sniped the priest, killed the rifles quickly, and these riflemen, you know, they were supposed to be strong at 50 supply, but that was not the case here. Very, very true. The worst position. Headhunt is in range of the priest and lacks some healing, lacks some dispel against the lightning shield there for sure. Noticeable. 
and focus now quite a bit ahead and this goes contraire to the WGL history that these guys share because there were five matches and 12 episodes between them and uh, yeah Fortitude took four of them the last four of them so focus with a little bit of revenge already Finding another straggler here as well, the reinforcing rifleman for it cannot afford these losses right now. MK is full mana, that's looking good. There's one heal scroll against the clamp. Also hits on the human side. Militia are gonna be needed here once again. They call from the main, but it takes a few seconds for them to arrive. Stomp versus clamp, what's gonna be better? Both sides lose a lot of hit points, starting to lose some units now as well. Speed scroll popped. Focus is he repositioning or disengaging? Both is viable. This TC, by the way, on level 4 so strong. Yes. This level 2 aura also a big, big help. And the militia now getting taken out. Heal scroll used in the fight now. Perhaps a bit late by 40. Seems like most of his army is dead already, but also... Focus is about to lose a lot of units here, possibly. Alright, we'll see. The Lightning Shield was really, really good once again. He's also very cautious with it. Never too many of them. But now almost all Shaman are gone. One comes in for another Dispel if he wants to. Invo Potion on the Archmage. She brought in two Invo Potions as the Wolves try to gather some more. Lots of corpses on the ground and we constantly have this 10 supply lead for the Orc. Now going for the Archmage. He has no Invo Potion anymore. Has to pass it, maybe, but the Storm comes in. And that's the first hero kill of the tournament. And oh, really? Maybe make it two as the Mountain King is super low as well. Obviously still has the potion, doesn't want to commit to that. The Sorceress goes down as well. The last bit of crowd control gone from the Chinese army and focus now. Just expanding on his advantage. With the expo yeah. up, mind you. Yeah, expansion finished. Level ups for the two Orc heroes also not too far away. And while Fortu was retreating, he got the heal scroll from the enemy shop as well. And 40 calls for the GG. Focus gets the 1-0 lead with a very solid performance. Fortitude playing the somewhat unusual nowadays MK and Rifles. Focus knows exactly how to counter it. And especially on this map, I wonder if that was the right play. Shouldn't he have been more aggressive, maybe? When he gets level 2 AM, he can run across the map, cancel the shop, be evasive with the footman, go for defend, and then fight, and then go for a tavern hero and apply some more pressure, going either for buildings or for headhunters, you can do one of the two. But Mountain King on AZ, it's hard to make work. Now, to be fair, he did get level three, but that fight in the top left just didn't go well enough and he was killed for it. Yeah, also 42 signature push, he couldn't really make it ha uh, work a little bit. Yeah, he delayed the beastery, but usually he goes for the burrows to slow down the orc by minutes when it comes to building an army. And that just wasn't possible because of that low level archmage. I really like the lightning shields by Focus. Never too many, never like creating a thunderstorm on the grunts, rather uh, focus on the spell. And the TC is such a great lightning shield carry. Whenever the militia arrived, instantly used that. Did so much damage. And Fortitude, because he lost so many units, couldn't really go for the heal scrolls or too many heal scrolls. And then at one point, there's just too much. You can't counter that anymore. Yeah, absolutely. We see the rerun here, the highlight, and this is the game deciding move. It's a little bit late into the fight. How did Focus get into this position? Like, he attacked <laughs> yeah. this Merc camp creep coming in from the south, and then he ends up all the way in the corner, and also able to force that TP there in the end. So many heroes close to dying. Maybe an invul potion transfer here to the AM would have been the right play. Well, actually, he had an invul already, but I guess a lot of the human army was about to go down. And ever since that point, Fortitude was so far behind. He never really got ahead this game. He went for this power build altar, trying to get ahead into the hero level, and that did work out. He got level 2 quickly, but he couldn't convert that level 2 into anything really meaningful. Now, he got the bestiary cancel. That was the one bright spot for the human yeah. this game, but apparently not enough. And I guess it wasn't even remade. Focus. Did he remake that bestiary? It seemed Don't, like he did it. No, right? We haven't seen a single Kodo nor a Raider. And okay, if that didn't work out, then... Uh... Must be it. That I just need my grunts, I need my shaman, I need my heroes, and that's good enough for me. Mountain King also in the first fight had a lot of mana left. Also here, not burning through it. Mana potions, we haven't seen a single one, right? Also due to the fact that he lost so many units. And then when the invo potion is gone, maybe there was a chance to swap over the invo potion. But then I guess the Mountain King falls, so you have to pick your poison there and both are deadly. Yeah, good performance by Focus. Um... That was, of course, his map. 
Fortitude knows he's gonna have his map choice coming up next, which is gonna be, should be, favoring him much more. It's gonna be Tidehunters. Much bigger of a map, many more creeps to be going around. If you do make it to the late game, you can almost assur assuredly expect this Mountain King to be super leveled. Also, there's four big consumables on Tidehunters, which is something that the MK loves to have, but same is the case for the TC. So it's always gonna be a double-edged sword with those uh, big creeps and those big items. Oh yeah. Looking forward to map number two, Fortitude. Hopefully a different and better game plan on his home turf, so to speak. And then we just might end up uh, with a draw in game one. Absolutely. In that case, it's gonna be 1-1. One, one. So 1-1 uh, one, one score and one point for each. Uh, so. Getting a 2-0, that's going to be doing a lot for your points. Getting the uh, three-point lead. It's going to be very important for Fortitude here to tie up the series. This is a very competitive group, so... Also, this match, he... right? This this match might just be the, the decider for rank 2. Because we got Moon in this group. And he's obviously the favorite. So this is super important now. Focus, big point possible. Yeah, there's also the X-Factor Alice in here, who has been looking decent recently, but not really all that scary. There was a while when Alice was really taking out big names, but uh, in the last couple of weeks in the smaller cups, he wasn't able to do that so much. Saving but strategies, Remo. Saving, saving strategies. Saving strategies. <laughs> and Moon is definitely the big favorite here, you're absolutely right. If everything goes according to plan, this might be the decision right here. Um, of course, tiebreakers might be required in the end if <laughs> everything is even. If it's going to be the same points, the same score, and then one one head to head, it might be a tie in the end. We'll see if we get to that point. But before, a lot of group stage is going to have to be played. Yeah, I was talking to Rob earlier, who's like the boss of WGL, and uh, we talked a little bit about the graphics, etc. And I was praising them all. He said, "Oh man." Please, no tiebreakers. Uh, what What up, man? Are you, are you getting old and lazy? It's like, no, but then it's getting past midnight, you know? Like, dude, you were the one choosing this system, so I know who's to blame if that does happen. And I think the chance for that isn't all too bad with the groups we have. So, map selection once again. Focus wins his map. And Tight Hunters is next with Autumn Leaves Concealed, Echo Isles Last Refuge, and Northern Isles out. No Turtle Rock, no Twisted, no Terranus, no. Is there, is there another one that I'm missing? Don't think so. Let me I mean, I mean no, no two rivers either, if, the if, we're, if we're naming them all. No Korea. It's sad. <laughs> Absolutely no bright sad. and dark, unfortunately. No <laughs> Would love to see that map again. 28 creep caps. Let's go. Maybe if a WGL falls on April Fools one day, we bring Bright and Dark back. Yeah, the new maps, great to see them here. Autumn Leaves and Tidehunters, they've been playing, have been played a lot recently in many different matchups. Seems like they're really uh, taken uh, a foothold in the scene, especially Tidehunters, perhaps a bit more. Autumn Leaves still getting vetoed a fair amount in some matchups. And by the way, at the moment, uh, War 3 Champions is looking at two new maps to possibly introduce into the map pool. Those being Shallow Grave and Shattered Exile. Pretty excited for that. Might be a thing for the future. I was looking kind forward of to this, man. How... I, I was looking at my at, at my imaginary clock. Like, how long does it take for Remo to start the map discussion right here? 35 minutes on day one of the tournament, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> The lifeblood of uh, it can be lifeblood of, of RTS, right? New maps are always cool to have. We were stuck on the same maps for a very, very long time, so it's really fun to see that we have these new maps in here. We were all wondering how is it going to work out with nine maps? It might be kind of weird. We had nine maps in the qualifiers, but only seven now here, and I think that is sensible as well. Yes. And Fortitude is going to show us here what he's going to be able to do on the new map, Tight Hunters. There is. A really ballsy creep you can go for, a bit of a risky, high lumber investment creep like the Merc, uh, the laboratory being taken early, but against the scouting and harassing Farseer, I think that might be a little bit too risky to do. Focus with his 4-0 win streak over Fortitude. Can he make it 5-0? This match could definitely go for it. The last win of 40 was an AWL beginning of the year in the game for third, which Fortitude won, but since then, Really not his matchup as well. He set nine series on this patch against Orc and went two to seven. 
which is, uh, especially for a guy who was an expert in Human vs. Orc once, it's just horrible. Yeah, he was an absolute menace. He was uh, the number one nightmare for Lin for a long time. But dude, that, that matchup was so different back then. It feels like it feels like a parallel universe. We were playing Blade Master first, Grunts, Shadow Hunter, Raider Walker. It was a long, long time ago. And with that style, it was very hard to prevent AM level three and to deal with water elemental and footman pressure. It turns out. With Farseer, Headhunter, and TC, that's much easier to deal with. Headhunters, they have pretty good DPS, they have a long range, they can also snipe water elementals pretty effectively, and a nicely well-placed stomp early on can also make a big difference. We have the same opening builds here again, the Fortitude again with the fast AM, which I think makes more sense on this map, because on, Autumn, uh, on Amazonia, you don't really need a power build for the fast level 2, but here, it might work out perfectly, to guarantee that level two here for the IM before the Farseer here shows up. All right. The predictions on Twitch said, by the way, 87% in favor of focus. That uh, seems like Fortitude disappointed a couple of people on map one. He didn't play too bad, but I guess it was a rather clear affair, all things considered. Focus there certainly looking solid indeed. Three farms once again, 40, gonna start the tech now then, I suppose. I would love to see him get level two and then run across the map. Be annoying, cancel the shop, don't get too greedy, don't look for previous glory, <laughs> um, because you're not gonna get borrow kills, but just cancel the shop, be evasive, wait for four, five footies, and then you can start fighting. Here we can see level two was acquired for the AM, got the gloves and gauntlets, which is mediocre items at best and now gonna try to deal with this wolf harass yeah, i should think be, be easier aggressive right? than this though excuse me i think you could be more aggressive than this yes, yes i yes. think he needs to be at home defending like just militia if you will use exactly. them well can deal with these wolves alone this am could be across the map already Annoying the orc on the other side. Yeah, 40 a little scared here for sure. Once again with the late tower. But as you said, like usually militia is clearly enough to deal with the wolves. And you want to force focus back or at least use the time to get closer to level 3. But neither is the case. Focus, this looks like a, when I'm laddering against Farseer Headhunters. Just stuck to his base and no chance to get out. Hey, you mentioned level 3. This is a great map for getting level 3, by the yes. way. There's so many small green camps that you can move to, one to the next as the human. You go to the north, you can even creep the natural without too much trouble. Then you could go to the murlocs, murlocs, enemy natural, and then you can get a fast level 3 and then go for the orc main. You can either that do that or harass on level 2 right away, but Fortitude just sitting in his base and just waiting and holding on, I feel like that's not the ideal play, honestly. Trying to go for it now. A little bit supply blocked as well, so only five footmen. No big progress towards level three, and Focus is 100% fine with this game. He's teching, two thirds already done. Shop coming up, won't be cancelled. Boros are safe. Level one and a half, Farseer even. Like, you don't need level two, but it's obviously a nice to have. And there's nothing to complain about when you're Focus. Yeah, absolutely. Finally, Fortitude here is going to evade his opponent, going to be running around the south side of the map. There's nothing really here that he can creep, though. All these camps are too hard to do, so he can't creep level 3. What he can do, however, is push into the orc base, and that can be pretty rewarding. We see the defense timer here. That is a crucial one. The footy is definitely in need of some bigger shields to deal with the spears from the headhunters and from the burrows. We have the first grunt out already, providing a bit of an early scout. And now Fortitude looking for those tier 2 cats. Okay, that is the patented play. But it's only a level 1 water elemental and Focus was so ready at this. He saw the group stage drawing and he was already preparing for this exact push right here. For like 3 weeks and with that, it's kinda easy to hold. Costs resources of course. He's not doing any damage to the footman, but the water elemental will expire. There's no second one coming. And this doesn't work at all. Yeah, if he had two water elementals there right away, maybe. Perhaps he summoned the first water elemental too late. If he summons the first one outside of the base and then runs into the orc base and summons the second one right away, then maybe he gets this 
Boro kill, but that didn't work out. Solid defense here by Focus. Even went for Spike Barricades in case these footies were going to stick around. The upgrade is super cheap, so very easy to afford. And Farseer keeps on creeping. And this Farseer, if he gets a fast level 3, that's very powerful in the early stages of the mid game. Oh yeah, Wolves, Chain Lightning, I mean, if you have Defend, that's nice against the Toothpicks of the Headhunters, but it doesn't help you against Chain Lightning as a uh, metal, you know, it's uh, uh, forwarding the electrocution, etc, etc. But yeah, uh, Mountain King is out now, and now Fortitude has the problem of not having achieved anything, being underleveled, and he needs a lot of time to get to the necessary stage of the game where he can be aggressive again and focus, can easily fall back, use that time, and get his levels. It just seems to be more of the same. So the power build into level two, Burrow Harass, and the rifle play following on tier two. Fortitude seems to have found his style that he prefers. I wonder if he's gonna keep playing that. Seems a bit predictable here, but uh, he can be aggressive, sending the rest of the camp away, preventing the TC from continuing to level, but Focus just wants to fall back here a bit more here, safely over at his orange camp, and then he's gonna have that level three Farseer, and these wolves are gonna be quite the menace. Also a problem with this build, playing rifles and not uh, double sanctum, is you're not gonna have breakers, you're not gonna have control magic to seal these yeah. wolves. Yeah, you can hope for dispel, but there's not always gonna be enough priests. There's not always gonna be enough mana. So these wolves just naturally, because of the build, are gonna be better than they could be otherwise. Yep, I agree. Did I see two beasteries there by focus or are my eyes betraying me as I'm getting older and older? I didn't really pay very close attention, I guess. Might be. Would but be unusual. But very maybe. unusual, but maybe it was just me being wrong. We'll see in a bit if we see a million raiders or wyvern, then I was right. And if not, then I was wrong. No shame in that. Good scouting by Focus, I feel, all along. There was always a unit checking out what is Fortitude doing. So his assessment is I can easily creep this one. Level 2 on the, T on the TC, two claws for him as well, which is nice for the fast here, I guess. Mana potion for the Mountain King, though. That can be a game changer. Yeah, absolutely. It might be getting level 3 here soon as well, creeping the gnolls right now and can go to the lab for a safe camp soon after. And if you have that mana potion in the MK, by the way, that means in the big fight, you can be really reckless with your mana usage. You can just spam, stormbolt and clap endlessly, control the TC and do damage to the orc backline at the same time. Super valuable. If you don't have mana potions, you have to be a lot more careful yeah. with how you use your mana pool. MK have... now close to 3, TC not quite yet. Oh, but an early invis potion even Ooh. before tc3 kind of surprising that focus looking for a fight so early on uh, also with the illusion what a cool combo this is but fortitude not being betrayed here sees a you take way too much damage you don't do any damage that's an illusion but hey where's your tc what's happening contesting this one stomp gets the last hit at level three excellent play by focus item also for the fast here, if I'm not mistaken. 40 was kind of ready with the yield scroll and invo potion. This could have been way more dangerous, but really, really nice move for the Korean. And now we have, again, a level lead for focus. Level three of both heroes. AM still not level three himself. Getting him to three for the Brilliance Aura would be nice to have. We're also far out on the map, by the way, far away from the human main. Yeah. In a full blown fight, you always want to have militia support. But in this position, it wouldn't be very effective. Big dispel, but only on the illusions. Maybe that opens the room for more lightning shield. Headhunter, shaman, and a couple of runs. Raiders now as well. We haven't seen them on map number one, so even more crowd control. And here's the lightning shield once again. Stomp into LS, into mass damage, into mass murder. And he doesn't have mana for the spell anymore because he used it on the illusion. So this lightning shield is doing tremendous damage. Another stomp coming into the back. Throw the beast also activated. I think it was on the TC, so it didn't really hit the headhunters, but on some of the units still applied. The grunts here are actually doing good DPS against these ra against these riflemen. Those rifles have to fall back. The MK now separated from the rest of the army. The militia have finally arrived, but they hardly did anything in this fight. AM finally gets level 3 with one more kill there against the grunt. Some militia going down, but this fight again going to focus. Not as clear as in game 1, but well enough to hold position here and buy time for the expansion. Yeah, I'm a little curious. Wasn't there more possible for 40? He still held on to the... Oh, surround! There is... He just got the dust. 
So can he reveal somehow? Don't think so. Has to give it up. Wasn't there more possible for this Mountain King? He still held on to the big mana potion. Could have popped it. And there were so many hurt units. And no heal scroll for focus. Yeah, and still no heal scroll left now. So honestly, Fortitude might have a good follow-up attack here. But his army has shrunk significantly. 40 supply only left, but he needs to push. He could cancel the expansion right now, but he doesn't have a scout right there. That's one of the issues for human in the mid and late game. It's pretty hard to scout. You don't have wolves to do it. You don't have wisps to do it. You don't have skellies to do it. It's hard to get off a reliable scout, and he doesn't know about this expo timing. But focus continues to creep and now has double level four. Oh, yeah. That's pretty big, man. My beloved level 2 Chain Lightning. Aura, never bad, especially when sorcerers are coming into play, which doesn't seem to be the case for now. But yeah, counters the slow kind of nicely. And level 4 is not around the corner for 40. There's uh, level 2 Brilliance Aura. Okay, that's great. No level 2 Stormbolt in case there's a hero kill possible. And the yeah, supply is even, but that's about it. Heal scroll for 40, mana potion, invo potion on the TC, also devotion aura. Just excellent. Wand of the Wind can be great on the TC in theory to cyclone him up in the air for six seconds. But purge is also usually a pretty good counter to that. Question is how the mana is looking. This is very important on both the priests and the shaman that mana countered there. Expo finishes. Focus can perhaps take his time here to find the perfect engagement. We have breakers now starting to come in. But it's only two breakers. Not that many yet. Speed scroll engagement. TC running in. Looking for the big stomp. But here is the cyclone. Getting purged right away. TC cycloned again. Another purge. And now no more cyclone. TC connects again. And the human army is stuck against the back of this forest. Little bit of safety for both of the second heroes. Who falls first? Stomp when the Mountain King's still at the invul. Lightning shield as well. Uh, chain lightning as well. Heal scroll used on 40 side, but he's with his back against the wall. Needs to do mass damage. But the Mountain King man focus is just going on to the dr little dwarf. Chain lightning last second TP by 40. Saving probably his tournament life with that fight and that escape. Killed a couple of units. Got MK level 4. And still has around 40 supply left here, Fortitude, but Focus, of course, mining off of two bases. He's got so much gold now, he can fall back to the shop. Clarity, mana potion, heal selves, and going to upkeep pretty quickly. 500 gold still left over for Focus, maybe even can he go for some upgrades. And he got the heal scroll in the middle, crucially important. Also an invis potion to, again, have the good engagement with the TC. Okay, who wins the LP Club Civil War? So far looking really good for Focus, but we got the level 2 MK now. Lots of mana on him, thanks to the robe. Archmage is getting close to level 4 as well, even though there's a couple of Shaman level 2. Might not be, yeah, exactly, might not be the right thing, but Blizzard comes into play. A little, little Chimiko-esque, I would say. Yeah, very cool to see. Always find the level 1 Blizzard doesn't do that much damage, but... It's a fair amount, right? Combined with clap, always good. The funny thing is, Chimiko has kind of moved away from this build, but ah. he was the one to pioneer it. But we'll see how Fortitude here fares with it. Focus isn't even looking to take the fight at his expansion. He's going for his own attack. And that makes sense. If you can trade his expansion for the enemy main, that's always a great trade for to go for. And Forty feeling forced to go all in, because guess what? He doesn't have a TP anymore. He has to now attack the orc base, I suppose. Okay, Town Portal home by Focus. He wants to end it right now. As he said, no way out for 40. Make it or, well, break, I guess. Massive, massive supply lead for Focus. He has the speed scroll. There is no escape for 40. He was at the shop, bought a TP, but what does the TP do for him now? MK in trouble right away, doesn't have an invul potion. He's just going to get clapped down, isn't he? Trying to transfer something, not going to work out. MK falls. And that is going to be the GG called. 2 over focus, 3 points. Big points for the Korean. And that's going to make for a very difficult group stage here for Fortitude to make it into the playoffs. Exactly. And the revenge for the past four WGL matches at once. There's a lot of doubt going through Fortitude's head probably right now. That was not excellent, my friend. That uh, little 2-1 dynamic, I think, in focus. Just super solid. There wasn't anything spectacular, as we said, leading into this game, right? Nothing too spectacular, nothing too fancy, no monster cheese strat that he came up with in the meantime. Just rock, solid, gaming, and the W. Three points leading Group A at the moment is Focus. 
Focus and Moon making it through here in first and second place seems fairly likely with that. But again, we have lots of games left here. Perhaps some upsets could be in store. Fortitude against Moon, does he have a chance there? Possibly. We don't know Moon's shape right now. Moon is, of course, one of the greatest players of all time, but he's not one of the most consistent players of all time. Oftentimes, he looks absolutely breathtaking, but at others, he can be a bit disappointing. So Fortitude's chances are not completely washed away yet, but yeah, he wants to step it up a bit here. I am worried about his Schumann versus Orc matchup because I think we've seen much better strategies in the last couple of weeks. I think we've seen much better adjustments from the humans. Good news is, that was the only orc in his group, but should he make it to the playoffs, he will want to have a new plan. But Remo, who is the most consistent player of all time? Well, <laughs> I, think you know the, I think you know the answer. <laughs> He's not playing in this tournament. Grubby! Probably. <laughs> we got five more matches for you here at WGL Summer, $47,500 on the line. We're going to be here for the rest of the week. Every time at noon, it's time for us to bring you the best Warcraft in the world. We move over in a bit once we get the highlights done to Group B, which on paper might be the weakest group, but we open it up with the banger with Colorful versus Soin. Colorful, the rising star of 2021, and Soin showed it as the DreamHack Regionals that he's a force to be reckoned with, but he's also a little inconsistent. We'll talk about that in a bit. And what we also have to talk about is your support. This is the NetEast Championship, so we want to keep the games as clean as possible when it comes to alerts, etc., etc. But you are contributing, and we are very, very grateful for that. Aragon, thank you for the almost two-year resub. Let's go. Hitman, thank you for the raid. P. Melu, thank you for the sub. Gods also. And I guess we could look into the highlights first before we continue this. But yeah, it was a pretty one-sided affair. Even on Fortitude's map, the fights just all went uh, in favor of focus. Heal scrolls were decent, but yeah, I really wonder, like if he stays in there a little bit with the mana potion pop, can't he get two, three, four more kills, then have more experience and play the game from there? Probably a little too scared by Focus's aggression. Uh, yeah, and it, it just feels like when you play this MK, you're just always playing from behind. You're never taking an initiative. You're yeah. never forcing the issue. You're never creating chaos for the orc. Sometimes, for example, when you pressure with the Beastmaster and like five defense footies, the headers are pushed into the back of the base. They're all stuck there and suddenly they're getting slashed down by the footy swords. If you play MK second, that is never going to happen. Never, ever. And it's a very predictable, straightforward game for the Orc. And Focus, he has played these uh, games plenty of times. He's still been laddering a lot, even if his time uh, availability at the moment is perhaps a bit lower. Of course, Focus is the workhorse, as we know. And not challenged too much here in his first game against Moon and Alice, especially Moon. It might be a bit tougher. That title of the workhorse is contested, by the way, Remo. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later in the broadcast. First of all, we talk about our supporters. Thank you, Gods. One year resub. WDL, cheers. Flutschfinger, thank you. Death Note, thank you for the host. Hefty Sneeze, 16 month. Toasters, four month resub. Great uh, dinner break. Uh, lunch break, sorry. Testy test, 28 month resub. 28 month, that is 56 Deutschmark. <laughs> <laughs> Nielskin, 23 months. Happy birthday, Neo. Hi, Remo. Thank you very much, Nielskin. And Silthra, six month resub. It's WGL. It's back to Warcraft. I love Remo. I love Neo. And a happy birthday to you, Neo. You gentlemen always make me smile. Silthra, you're making me smile with that as well. Thank you very much. Of course, all the links uh, for the support for the channel Back to Warcraft in the About section. You can throw us a donation. You can sub to this channel. You can uh, pledge on Patreon. You can throw us crypto money if you want to. That's kind of new. We got merchandise. We got an Amazon ref link. We got it all just to provide you with the best Warcraft in the world on almost a daily basis. Yesterday, three ESL Cups. Rest of the week, WGL. It's a great time to be a Warcraft fan. Yeah, we got plenty of big tournaments coming up here on Back to Warcraft. You're very well situated. And yeah, it is Neo's birthday today. So doubly a great day today. Neo's birthday and the beginning of WGL. Now, the question is, of course, Neo, hmm? what could WGL do for you today 
as a nice little birthday gift for the Neo Boy? Well, there's just one answer, of course. It's a win of Linguagua. Easy. That's all it takes to make my day. And Foggy, of course. Yeah, well, if Foggy wins, I'm already very happy. If Foggy and Linguagua win, probably best 30 second birthday ever. All right, Rob, if you heard this, maybe yeah, there's some way you can rig this, possibly. Uh, Linguagua going up against Sock later, Foggy going up against 120. That's going to be our last game of the day. That's going to be so really hype. Cool. I'm so very hype. looking forward to this one. They, in fact, played very recently, so this is sort of the rematch, which is uh, also very fun. And it's going to be possibly determining quite a bit in the group. Like we saw just a moment ago, Fortitude losing that match against Focus makes uh, his prospects seem a little dire. Zero points at the moment. Focus with his three-point head start is gonna, uh, yeah, have a good time here. If Fortitude loses to Moon 2-0, he might be out already. He might very, very well be out. This was kind of a decision match in Group A for maybe the second uh, place. We'll see. We have an interview here, the stage in Shanghai. We all know this uh, very, very well. And we got focus on the line. Wonder if we get some translations here. I uh, heard Vengolia is around. I heard that uh, Wong is around. So we'll see what focus has to say. Uh, 보크를 플레이하고 있는 LP 팀의 포커스라고 합니다. 嗯，我们发现Focus确实经过了一个赛季过后，又变得稍稍的软弱了不少哈。那Focus也在我们的赛前采访当中说到，他目前的状态其实不是最佳的，而他的小目标也只有八强而已。但是今天他的状态其实大
저희 조회수 일단 장재호 선수를 일단 어, 각 제일 강한 것 같고 그리고 아, 뭐 앞으로 만날 수 있는 상대 중에서는 제가 요새 잘 문의 있는 선수가 많아서 리인이라든가 120 선수, 로라이어트 선수 다 제가 최근에 많이 지고 있기 때문에 아직 8강에 가더라도 4강까지 가려면 좀더 열심히 해야 될것 같습니다. You said your goal is to make it to the quarterfinals. Uh, who's your biggest opponent on the way to the playoffs? I guess I know the answer, and I guess it's going to be Moon, but we'll see what focus says. Uh... Yes, we saw focus is so patient, but we also thank focus for accepting our interview, and we also thank you for winning the Red Cap. We look forward to your next match. Bye bye. Bye bye. 我们期待的是，我们期待的是，我们期待的是，我们期待的是，我们期待的是，我们期待的是，我们期待的是，我们期待的是，我们期待的是，我们期待的是，我们期待的是，我们期待的是，我们期待的是，我们期待的是，我们